Hello and welcome back to Clinical Psychology Community UK. My name's Holly and I'm a third year trainee clinical psychologist just coming to the end of the course. This is a really requested video uh, of how to get a first in your psychology undergraduate degree. Here are some of my tips uh, that helped me get my first, I think, um, and hopefully they'll be helpful for you too. So let's get into it. So how to get that first class degree. Get, firstly, I want to say that getting a first is not everything, actually. Like it if you want to be a clinical psychologist some courses do want you to have got a first and they will score you higher in the academic shortlisting of your application if you have a first but it is not an essential criteria for any courses i don't think might be for some correct me if i'm wrong down below in the comments um but getting a first class really doesn't have to be everything i did not take that attitude at uni i was like first or fail i put a lot of pressure on myself and it probably wasn't that helpful so while i am going to give you some tips I just need to caveat that with it actually isn't the most important thing in the world and there are more important things um, going on <laughs> um, but here are some of the tips tip number one is organizing yourself and I know that that probably sounds quite obvious um, but you need to work out what works best for you try a few things out and see what works because there is a lot to think about when you're trying to do a degree not just with the actual academics of doing a degree and making sure your essays are on time and all of that stuff, but also in terms of managing a social life and like learning to live independently. There's a lot of stuff that happens. Um, learning how to pay bills for the first time. It's a lot to, man to manage. So work out how to organise yourself. These are some of the things that you can try. Creating a spreadsheet or a document, table, whatever you want to do for each module detailing the requirements of each module. I mean, this should be provided to you in some sort of course pack or something, but if it isn't, um, you can make it in your own way. So yeah, creating a document that has your master document showing each module, what you need to do, when you need to do it by, um, how the things are assessed, if there's any extra credit options available. Lots of the courses in the UK don't offer that. I think it's a bit more of an American thing perhaps. You can also create a timeline um, that has all of your assignments and exams on to help you organise your time. So especially if there are lots of assignments due around the same time, actually, because then you need to be able to prioritise that time. Um, and also it just helps you manage your social life as well, not, not just the, the course related stuff. And also try and use a calendar or a diary to organise your time. I'm a massive paper diary person. I write down the things that I need to do each day. I've got colour coded things for events. Like I just need a paper diary. But I also do have a little bit of a an outlet calendar diary as well. I might use my phone for some things. I'm just a bit of an organiser. I just like to use lots of things. But find out what works for you and use that stuff because it really does help. Um, and also getting your assignments in on time, that's mainly the reason, because you do not want to be capped to 40 or get a zero because you could put it in late. So make sure that you are on time. And also, if you need an extension, then you can request time for an extension if you know that you're going to need that extension coming up. So I personally believe that organising yourself is a really important part, or it certainly was for me anyway. Tip number two then is... Again, I feel like lots of these are quite obvious, but understand your assignments and have a really good understanding of it. So if you don't fully understand what you've been asked to do, you will not be able to reach the highest marks. You just won't because you won't understand what you're supposed to be doing. So what you can try is downloading the mark scheme and reading it and actually reading it, like making sure that you've downloaded it and you go, right, OK, that's what they're looking for for a first. That's what my course did. My, they gave us mark schemes for the majority and they said, this is what a first would look like. This is what a two one would look like. This is what a two two. This is a you know, third. This is a fail. That's what the, each assignment would look like in terms of the marking. So really think about that mark scheme. Also, speaking to your tutor or whoever it was that set the assignment can be quite a good thing. If you have any queries, um, then they might be able to help you. They might not. They might not have the time. We'll get into a debate about universities providing time to students another time. But yeah, speaking to your tutor or your lecturer is really important. Also, you can ask, so this is something that happens on DCLIM, but didn't really happen during my undergrad or my master's, but asking for any examples of work that's received high marks before you know in other arenas and it also could that also could and that also could be um 
also asking for any examples of work that has received high marks. This is something that wasn't really done on my undergrad or my master's, I don't think, but it was done, uh, is, is done during the declin. You get to see other pieces of, you know, example work that's of a high standard. Um, so that's, that's quite helpful as well. You can also maybe ask around for, you know, if you all get assignments back, you can see if any of your friends got a first and if they minded you reading it just to see what it was like. Um, because if the assignment's been done and you're not really copying it, that makes sense. Tip number three then is accessing support. Um, because universities do have a responsibility to support you, like a legal responsibility. They have a duty to support you during your studies. And it can be in the form of mental health support, academic, social, physical health support, pastoral support. Um, but yeah, legally, they need to be able to provide you some support. And that can look like reasonable adjustments. So it could be like getting extra time in exams or longer to do your assignments. But you need to contact your university support service if you have any additional requirements that mean that you're going to struggle. Because take every opportunity that you have to, to the system is there to be used. So make sure that you use it if you need it. And this can also include extenuating circumstances. So in my third year, I got extenuating circumstances that meant that my um, degree was, it was right on the border of a, a first or a two one, and they classified it as a first because of those extenuating circumstances, which was a really fair way of doing things because I did have a very difficult time during third year. So, you know, the system is there and to give advantage to people that need it. If, if you have been disadvantaged in some way so really do try and I also know I will caveat that with sometimes university support systems can be really really rubbish um but they have a legal responsibility so keep pushing and keep asking for support without the appropriate support you need the high marks are going to be harder to access it doesn't mean you can't get them but it's just going to be a lot harder and if the support is there then access it Number four is use feedback. So when you get your assignments back, you will receive some feedback. It might be quite brief, but you will receive some feedback from the markers. What you can try is looking for comments that can be applied to other pieces of work. So for example, if they say the introduction needs to include more reference to literature or the discussion or your conclusion needs to relate more to clinical stuff or whatever it is, look for that look for the specific kind of transferable comments that you might be able to use. Also clarifying any points you don't understand with the marker. So, you know, if you've got a lower mark than you were expecting, that can be really difficult to manage and you can be quite annoyed and upset about that. I definitely was at times. Um, and so uh, getting feedback and then being able to kind of go, oh, I'm actually not sure why that is that. So clarify it. You know, they are there to provide you with support to get your degree. They may not always make you feel like it, but they are. So make sure that you're clarifying any points that you don't understand, because how are you supposed to learn if you don't understand the feedback? And also asking to see feedback from other students, like who have received high marks. So again, if you've just got a load of assignments back, other people, other, you know, your friends, can you ask them if you can have a look at their feedback and see if you can improve that way? Because that can be really helpful shared learning, because that's what you do when you work. You have shared learning. You share with everybody what you've learned and, and hopefully gain from other people what they've learned. So it's, you know, really good skills for that. And number five, this is like, again, I feel like I'm just giving you really obvious advice, but I think it's really important to get the basics right. And what I mean by that is you are throwing away marks by not getting those basics right. So spelling and grammar mistakes, I sometimes read university level, like undergrad, master's level work for people and the spelling and grammar mistakes are, are in there. I'm guilty of it. I make them. And sometimes I get feedback from an assignment on the declin being like spelling and grammar. And I'm like, yeah, sorry. But it's different on the declin because you get pass unconditionally, pass with minor corrections, which is usually spelling and grammar stuff, pass with major corrections or a fail, which doesn't really happen. And um, so we get a chance to kind of review those, which is far more realistic, but that's not how universities work. You have to get it right. So make sure you are going through that with a fine tooth comb, because if you have spelling and grammar mistakes, they actually can't give you the firsts a lot of the time. So really get that stuff right. Also ensuring the structure is as it was specified on the mark scheme. So 
is the mark scheme saying we want an introduction um we want a theoretical basis we want a discussion of literature clinical implications and conclusions is is that what they want then make sure you are using the headings that they specify if they specify any headings make sure you are really following that mark scheme because if you're not they can't give you the high marks you know you want to make it as easy as possible for them to give you those high marks also, ensuring you're under the word limit. I mean, that should be fairly basic, but just making sure that you are, because again, some of those things, sometimes there are clauses in there, like if you're over the word limit, then you're capped to 40, just like being late. Like it's, do not throw away those marks. And also formatting the tables and references correctly using the way that they want you to do it. Some people want Harvard, some people want APA, some people, you know, it depends on what the university specifies, but make sure you're getting that right. And I only started using reference management software in the DCLIN. Like, so I'd been at uni four years before that. I'd done my undergrad and my master's. Had no idea. It was handwriting references out. It's insane. Reference management software is really helpful. And I use Mendeley, which is brilliant. Um, there's an add-in that you can put into Microsoft Word. They can then cite them for you and put them in the bibliography and the reference list. Like, it's just a game changer. You just can't do assignments without it. So 100% you should get get that and you can then set it you know for whichever reference style that they want so then it's just done you don't have to worry about it or check it it's just done um so i cannot impress upon you enough getting the basics right is important if you look at mark schemes it will say in the basics you know it it will say absence of spelling and grammar mistakes structure is our specified all of that sort of stuff will be in the first category so really try and do that Number six is additional reading as well. So it's called reading for a degree for a reason. <laughs> this is the biggest thing that can distinguish between first and second class work, I would say. Um, you can really tell if someone's done reading around subject. So what you can try is reading the recommended works. So you will have a, a, an essential reading list and a recommended reading list. Have a look at those and also check the references it, in those pieces of work. So if you are recommended to read a paper on abnormal psychology or developmental psychology read that paper and then also look at the references and have a look at reading some of that stuff see if there's anything in there also search so google scholar is just just my life i spend hours and hours on google scholar when i'm writing assignments at the moment so search keywords on google scholar so if you want to find out stuff about cbt for anxiety or if you want to find out stuff about a developmental syndrome put that into google scholar and it will come up with a whole load of papers and what's brilliant about that reference management software is you can cite the reference from there and you can download it and it will go straight in the, you know it's it's done for you it's brilliant also reading recent research papers on a topic and that will come up on the Google Scholar database because you can you can um, filter it by the date as well. Um, but just doing a standard Google search will also help you come up with the most recent papers. The other thing I would say is read systematic reviews and meta-analyses on the topic. So if you've been asked to, I don't know, do something about... Um, some sort of developmental disorder like Rett syndrome um, and if there's anything new coming out on that then read a systematic review on the impacts of Rett syndrome or whatever it is because that will be a review of the literature on a specific topic and a meta-analysis is um, an, an, an analysis of the data within those studies so it's a huge 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 meta is like big it's a huge 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 analysis of all of those studies and papers but that can give you a really good overview of what the literature is saying, what the, you know, because that's actually what you want to do. You're trying to situate your work within wider research. And that is what makes the, you know, that's really what shows, gets the big marks. And also clinically related, look at the NICE guidelines on the topic. So the National Institute of Care and Health Excellence, NICE, um, publishes guidelines for um, a whole range of stuff, not just psychology related things, but, you know, physical health stuff as well. Have a look on there. There will be some guidance on how to treat depression, for example, if you're looking at clinically related things. I would also, um, and this, this is something I probably would think about now rather than something I did necessarily, and you can't do this for all of them because you might be reading a lot of research, but I would say to try and keep a log of research that you read, which will help you then summarise some of the evidence base and it will help you draw 
kind of links in between stuff. It's, it is time heavy and it is labor intensive, but I think it can be really useful um, and just showing that you can read around the topic. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. And I really wish you all the best of luck with your undergrad degrees. If you have any more comments, any tips, pop them down below and we can share them with this wonderful community. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.